Good morning. That, that song reminds me of one of Houston Lang, uh, Houston, Langston, Langston Hughes, thank you. Um, his poem, the, A Dream Deferred, you know, and what happens when we don't allow what has been planted in us to come forward, you know, and that's what our focus is, that we are powerfully made by a God of goodness, and it has planted something inside of us, and when we get our thoughts out of the way, then that magnificent comes through, and when it does, it's a work of art. That's what we're talking about. And for those of you who are visiting us, particularly the young people from our neighborhood church, I appreciate you coming to be with us in our, in our Center for Spiritual Living. You may have noticed we have an art show in our social hall, and actually it's a tradition. Every November we bring art into our service because um, art is a wonderful way of appreciating the, the magnificence of creation. And we were just thinking about how long has this art show been with us? I, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years, I don't know. So with all good traditions, we forgot when it started or what it means, you know. In fact, we've added to it over the years, you know. Now we've brought um, art onto the stage first in four weeks and then seven weeks of art and then we added a, a reception and then we had... Um, no, we had la last week at the reception we had a, a film festival of art, of art films made from people in our own community. Years before we've had dance demonstration, classical music, um, poetry reading, and many people have told me that through this art festival they felt that invitation to get their mind out the way and let themselves do something they've always wanted to do and to let something, how it's been a, a turning point in their life. And isn't that fascinating that right here is an opportunity for us to go and be inspired or create in our own backyard. You don't have to go anywhere on a, a pilgrimage. Right here you can get reacquainted with what was planted in you in the beginning. That's the idea that we're looking at, that um, somehow we're all part of creation. You know, here at the Center for Spiritual Living, when we talk about God, we sometimes call God it because we think God is too big to be he, she, anything at all. So we, we play with the word it, and sometimes we use uh, love as a synonym for God, or life, or creation, and we're, we're appreciating this month that we're all part of God's creation. Somehow that's the thing we've got in common. In us is the creativity of creation. That's what we made of. There was nothing else to make us from. But God itself. And somehow creation, imagine this, thought it was a good idea to come into being as you. And what you do with that is your art. I mean, we might say that um, our raw material, our building blocks, um, that the tools of our art are, well, you know, it's um, how we express ourselves, what we bring forward into life, you know. Life itself is our clay, our paint, our poetry, and what we do with it is our creation. There is what we're talking about this month, you know. And you know, you can't really talk about creativity without talking about freedom. Because apparently, God is so brilliant that God created us with the freedom to express our life any which way we please. As big or as modest as we want. I mean, you know, we've all got different amounts of this and that talent, height, looks. But with as much as you have or as, as little as you got to work with, nevertheless, you've got freedom. Choice. You can really get into life. Get your hands all messy and lean into it and do something. Or you can just sit back and watch as life moves past you. You have that freedom. Or, or, you know, you can go through life as an observer, directed more about what you can get out of it. Or you can let life go through you for its own purpose. Like we said in the affirmation, the creative genius of spirit flows through me when I let it. Because that's how God created us, with the freedom to stand in the way or not. I love what Mother Teresa said about expressing God's love in the world. She said, I am a little pencil in the hand of a writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. <laughs> 
isn't that great? And, and I see that she let the creative genius, God, flow through her for a great purpose in life. Now, you know, when I say great purpose, sometimes I go, well, that can't mean me because, you know, it sounds too huge. I mean, what great purpose? What great purpose in my life? You know, and, and I'm remembering today a great purpose can be many things. Uh, I mean, a great purpose could be to raise a child as best as you can, not knowing how it's going to turn out. A great purpose can be to love somebody as best as you can and not knowing how it's going to turn out. A great purpose can be to survive a devastating illness and get through and then help other people get through the same way you did. A great purpose can be to share with what you've got, because maybe it's not so much, to help other people live well. You know, a great purpose doesn't have to be a masterpiece to be great. You know, that's where I get stuck. Oh, for it to be great, it has to be the best of the best, the biggest of the biggest. But I'm, I'm thinking that can't be so. So I'm thinking, what, what makes a purpose great? You know. And so I'm playing with some thoughts from world religions. Well, from Islam, I get um, only God is great. From Christianity, I get God is love. So I put them together. And love is great. So why not say a great purpose is a purpose that expresses love? And then even the most ordinary act of kindness can be a work of art. Expressing God's love. Mother Teresa said something about it too. She said, do not think that love, in order to be genuine, has to be extraordinary. You know, that's where I go to. It has to be the biggest of the biggest. You know, and I've seen people treat creativity in the same way. Maybe you do the same thing. You know, if you can't paint the Mona Lisa, then you're not creative. <laughs> you know? Or, or, or they treat life in the same way. You know, if, if you can't change the entire world, then you're, then you're not effective. Or if you're not married by a certain age, or if you don't own a certain thing, or if you don't if totally revolutionize the, all of society, you don't feed everybody that's hungry, then you've done nothing. Mother Teresa had something to say about it. She said, you know, if you can't feed a hundred hungry children, just feed one. And I love that because it's bringing everything really close and personal and accessible to see that just the ordinary acts of genuine kindness is letting the creative genius of the universe express itself through us in a beautiful artistic way. Mother Teresa had something to say about it. <laughs> she said, every time you smile at someone... It is an action of love, a gift to that person, a beautiful thing. I love that because it makes me think, you know, every time I'm just genuinely kind, I'm getting out of the way and letting the creative genius of the universe, God, God's love, create through me. I don't know what great purpose is in your life to express, you know, but I'm sure there is one. I'm certain of that. And maybe it's closer than you think it is. I mean, maybe you're doing it already. It's possible, you know, because maybe you just didn't know it. You didn't know it because you thought it had to be monumental. You thought it had to be bigger than life itself. And you got so bogged down in the idea.